Hello. So, I know I've been over this several times, but I really do want to re-emphasize how the Royal Navy was seeing the world in 1939. And I want you to think about the various projects I have talked about in the past and the ones I'll talk about in the future, but you don't know what they're going to be. I do, if you ran up for me. But this is the Royal Navy's domain of protection in the 1930s. What it is looking at. What it is thinking about. These are the ships which are big enough for it to take interest in, and therefore for it to actually bother mapping. And now I want you to think about the cruise of the Graf Spey and where that has taken her. She's been in the South Atlantic, down in this area. She's been in the Indian Ocean, in this area. She has is now heading over to the River Plate. She is now finally heading over to an area which is rich in targets, which is rich in potential trouble for the Royal Navy should she be successful in that area. The repercussions can be massive. Remember, a few years ago, there was a real big scare in the news about Somali pirates. Still an ongoing problem, as is the ongoing problem of piracy in West Africa. But still, if we think about that, that was this trade route which was being infected. It was massive in the 1930s, it is still massive to this day. It is of critical importance. Trade routes haven't really changed. So if we think about it, the grass bay the whole time has been doing, as I said, a psychological operation away from the trade routes but causing maximum disquiet for the Royal Navy. It's something which the Soviet Union would later look at and form the basis of what they were conceding for their third of class cruisers. Now I've written about that on Global Maritime History. Basically the third ofs were to keep the Western navies occupied, to keep them having to send forces elsewhere in the world so they couldn't concentrate on defending this area because if they can't defend this area, then the massive amount of troops from this cannot get to here, cannot get to here. That's the theory. Practice might be different, but we'll see. For the Germans in World War II, it's similar, but different again. Remember, in 1939, America has not entered the war yet. Sorry, she hasn't. She's sitting out the war at the moment, Britain and France against the world, but Germany still understands and has a fixation on the importance of colonies, the importance of empire. For Britain, it's critically important because a massive army sits here, and you might well need these reserves, especially if you're thinking World War II is going to degenerate into World War I-style trench warfare. And our lessons of World War I and has shown you have crack troops here. You have crack troops here. You have crack troops up here as well. Also, you have pretty much quite a lot of crack troops from these areas, which if you can mobilize, will provide very fine additions to your armies, very critical additions to your armies. So you need the sea, you need the trade going, you need it to help keep your currency going, keep your economy afloat, to give you all the supplies and all the sucker you need to wage a modern war. So disrupting this trade, even for days, causes an impact. Weeks cause an impact. But if they can draw enough escorts away from this area, these major, colossal, critical trade routes, and this other supply of troops and crack troops up here, and in here, then you can maybe cut off the supplies, or at least severely impact altogether, with your submarine forces. This is what Hitler's admirals understood. Hitler himself never seems to quite get this. Possibly that's why he has, goes on his anti-surface raid, anti-big ship rant and decides to get rid of them. Probably it's because he keeps seeing them lose to the Royal Navy, because the Royal Navy is 
doing a major operation to stop them being successful, to stop them being effective. But still, they are actually important parts of the, of the operational plan. The biggest problem for the Royal Navy, and for this, if you want to look into this, have a follow of Marcus Faulkner, an amazing naval historian, would have been if the Germans had started World War II with an aircraft carrier. Now, this might sound strange, but for the Germans, if they started World War II with an aircraft carrier, yes, a single one would not have been that effective against the Royal Navy, not for a fleet battle. But an aircraft carrier with its wider radius of search, with its ability to impact on a far larger area, would have been a massive danger for trade. It would have gone straight to the Royal Navy's not would like to kill list, not need to kill list, but to the top of the must kill under all circumstances list. That ship would have been numero uno on every target. Every admiral's playbook would have orientated around taking that ship out of play. It'd be the kind of equivalent of the modern tactics versus SSBNs. I.e., if you spot an enemy ballistic missile submarine, you sink it. You don't ask questions, it's gone. It's taken off the table because it is such a big threat. It's the same with an aircraft carrier prior to World War II from a surface radar and economic warfare perspective. So, we have the grass bay down here, which has been doing a good job of trying to distract British forces down south. But it hasn't done enough of a job. Because, and we'll get into this afterwards, but arguably because it was pursuing a very conservative, very psychological warfare strategy, and actually wasn't taking enough of a physical warfare strategy to have the required impact. So actually, due to the delays of communications and those periods and these things, its impact was lessened. Now, hang on. It's all a bit of conjecture these days. But it's worthwhile thinking about again, and it's worthwhile thinking about this total down here. 2,712 ships. Big enough for the Royal Navy to take notes of. British and Dominion merchant shipping of and above 3,000 tons gross. So, these are ships which are bigger than 3,000 tons. We think about the graph space killers. How many have been above 3,000 tons? But 2,712 belonging to British and Dominions. That's what they're protecting. 